Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a video that's been quite highly requested I would say over the kind of past two years. People always ask me how they write, how to write a personal statement, how to write an application form, how to write a cover letter for PhDs or for masters and I've written quite a few. I've written probably like 20. I didn't get my offer for my PhD straight away. I had to write so many applications before I got the one that I actually wanted and before I got a position. And I think it was like about two, three months ago, I had a message from a girl and she was applying for a PhD in economics, I think it was, or was it law? I don't remember. Hey, I, I really don't know what to write. Please help me. And I thought, okay, I can, I mean, I can tell you what the skeleton is and how to scaffold it. You're doing yours in law and so I can't be of much help. But I, you know, I told her what my, my top tips were. I gave her about seven or eight points and, you know, she said thank you and that was it. And then a few months ago, I had a message from her, so this is on Twitter, DM. A few months ago, I had a message from her saying, hey, you never guess what, I got the position. Um, she was like, you know, your personal statement, your cover letter, tips really helped. I basically followed that to the T and I got an interview and I got an offer and it was somewhere in the UK. I think it was in like Bath or Hull or something or York, I can't remember where it was. Um, and it just made me think, hey, I just told her what to do based on my experience in the sciences and it was transferable to the so social sciences or to literature or whatever. At the end of the day, the structure for writing a personal statement or a cover letter is the same. All my tips on, on my phone, I also have some notes <laughs> here. So if you want to know what to include when you're writing an application for your PhD or your master's cover letter or personal statement, then keep on watching. Number one, you need to be able to explain the background of your topic in a few sentences. So I'm not sure if you've read um, abstracts before or sort of summary um, paragraphs where someone explained their whole, sometimes their whole thesis in a number of sentences. So you need to be able to explain what it is that you are looking for, what it is that your topic of expertise is or your topic, topic of interest is in a few sentences. You might be so passionate about something and you might love something so much, they do not have the time to read that. So now, I would say to be very specific, so don't just say, oh, I want to do cancer research. But cancer research is huge! If you're interested in cancer research, even if you don't say, you know, maybe what kind of cancer, if you say maybe a technique, so I'm interested in looking at the microscopic um, structure of cancer cells, or I'm interested in looking at the damage that cancer cells do to um, the body or the organ or the toxicity that cancer cells cause which ultimately causes you know so be really specific in that sense you know it shows that you've done your research start the whole statement off with just a couple of sentences stating what your interests are and be very specific or as specific as you possibly could be after you've done that move on to explain what is missing what you think is missing in that field so, of course, you know, you're not an expert, you probably just come out of university, um, you're not going to know the ins and outs of that field, but it does help to be able to have done some research in the field, maybe, you know, read a few papers, I'd recommend to go to pubmed.com, pubmed.com, or go to googlescholar.com, or you can use, um, what else can you use, Mendeley, um, there are a few, just, or you can just Google search it, and take a look at what is missing in the field today. Um, a way to do that without reading a lot, this is a top tip by the way, if you look at a really popular paper, so let's say for example you were looking at, I don't know, um, pancreatic cancer for example, if you were to type in pancreatic cancer into PubMed and look at for example a, you know, a really good paper from Nature or something, in there, usually in their introduction they will say what the latest research is and what is missing. Papers always include this so it will save you the time um, and also you know that what you're saying is valid and is true um, so I would highly recommend that so yeah after you've given your statement and saying you know um, I'm interested in the cell cortex and um, the, the, the proteins that lie within it in this field I feel that there is a lack or a misunderstanding of how these proteins interact scanning through the literature I have found that there is a lot that is misunderstood or a lot that is unknown about the number of these proteins or how these proteins interact or how these proteins work together to cause cancer or you know have a have a role in cancer or whatever it is that you want to say you have shown that not only do you have a field of research that is specific that you are interested in 
but also you know what research is kind of what research needs to be done and you have done the literature search and you have done the research and at the end of the day you're not supposed to be an expert you know I've done a PhD I've you know four years but I still don't know everything about the field that I did it in um, so you're not expected to come out and you're not expected to know everything but if you do show that you've done some reading and you do show that you know what it is that you are talking about to some extent even if you you may not be correct <laughs> entirely that really puts you in a good um in a good standing and it it does give you brownie points you understood the field you know what it does you know what the problems and the limitations are because without limitations there is research doesn't need to exist because everything's perfect right future work that i i am interested in looking at would be important to be able to make this system more efficient to be able to save time you've you've identified your interest you've identified the gap and you've identified how you would plan to um how you plan to improve or work on that gap so i think that's really 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 good. Those are the three key points I think that you should start with. Next, I will move on to describing your aims and your hypothesis. So again, like it really depends on what you're applying for. So write down what you plan, what you plan to do. Maybe break it down, break it down into three or four different kind of main aims, and give you a hypothesis. So um, again, let's stick to like cancer research, just because it's something that I, you know, I know quite a bit about. Um, let's say you're looking at um, a specific type of drug or a specific I don't know, a specific technique, let's say, um, and let's say you're looking at a specific technique, you should be able to say what you think your research is going to do. Hypothesis is essentially a prediction, so you're predicting that something's going to happen based on something else. So you need to be able to have some sort of hypothesis um, where you can state your prediction and your aims. Uh, I, th I think it's this is probably not the most important part, but it does really show scientific fluency. It really shows your um, your skill to analyse critically, like kind of critically look at something and think about how you're going to change that. When you actually get into that position in the PhD, you will have so much support. The person, you know, the professor will always be there to help you. You know, you won't be left alone to just do things by yourself. But Showing that you are able to take initiative and think of these ideas by yourself independently at such an early stage um, in your infancy of, you know, of research, I think it's really admirable and it looks really good to the professor. So I'd highly recommend just making up some aims and hypotheses that sound and, you know, can be quite realistic. The next thing you need to include is the methodology that you think you want to use. So if you were looking at um, again let's say cancer research and you wanted to you said initially you said you were interested in look at looking at the microscopic or the macroscopic uh, detail of cells then you might want to say to do this i would like to use i would plan to use an electron microscope or a transmission microscope or i might want to use a certain type of microscopy or i would like to use a certain technique where you know you're collecting cells or you're staining cells or whatever so do a little bit of research, I would say, on the different types of methods that can be used in research um, to in that field. And the way to do that, I think, would be to, I think the best way to, because, you know, it's, it's really hard, like I said, you're an infant <laughs> in research, and it's so challenging to know what techniques are out there and what sounds good and what is the best way. So I think the best way to do that would be to look, again, go to PubMed or Google Scholar. Look for papers that are in that field that you are applying for or that you are interested in and there's a method section it's usually either it's usually right at the end of the paper or it's sometimes halfway in between so do double check that go there and look at their techniques and they will tell you exactly what they did the exact techniques that they use the exact measurements of substances or, or chemicals or cells whatever type of cells that they use use that information to think of how you would you might do it so if they say, for example, they use scanning microscopy to look at um, a certain type of stain or whatever, go online, Google scanning microscopy, have a little look, have a little read about what it does, what the aims are, what the good things are, what the bad things are about it, and then just write a quick sentence or two stating what, how it is that you would approach this situation or this limitation. 
So remember, the first, the second thing that you did was state the limitations in the field, state what's missing, state what the hole is, where the gap is. Right, you've done that. How are you going to tackle it? I'm going to tackle it by using scanning electron microscopy, staining the cells with something, and looking at how cancer impacts that, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I think um, it, it's not an easy challenge. It's quite challenging, um, but it's not beyond you guys, is it? Next thing to do is make sure that you reference. You know, for example, there are big names in certain fields, uh, people that have done significant things uh, and made significant uh, sort of steps towards understanding a concept. Name that person. Say so and so. Um, has shown that this and this and it really it it really shows that you have interest you it, it evidence at the end of the day it proves and it evidences that you have interest because if you didn't have interest if you if you truly have interest in something you look into it you look at the details you review it you look inside and out for it so the fact that you've read a paper you've read more than one paper you, you've captured who the main kind of characters are in the field you mention their name or the group sometimes there'll be a specific center or specific institute that works on those things mention them and it just again it just it really impresses the professors because they look at that they look at the personal statement and they think wow that person has really gone to, into a lot of depth and a lot of research to try to understand this um, and to try to sh and to show me that they understand you know they, they get it and they're interested in it Again, remember, you're not supposed to be the expert. You are not supposed to be the one that knows it all. Two last, two last bits. So the next bit, I think this is the sixth point. The sixth point is to explain how this research will be used in the future. Let's find the gap. You've talked about the method. You've talked about what it is that you're going to do and what you think is going to happen. So then in the future, you want to explain the potential of this in its application. By finding out the interaction between these two proteins, this will help because it will guide researchers towards a better understanding of the protein-protein interaction leading to better development of drugs or better development of therapies, etc, etc. Again, I'm talking about really much about biology here, but this works for any field. Um, even if it's like, let's say, literature, you might want to say something like, um, this will help you under this will help us understand literature better uh, and understand the context of certain uh, certain writings, certain poetry, certain novels. Uh, and I think yeah, it's really important to show that you've thought ahead because ultimately research we do it today, but it's meant for tomorrow, and then tomorrow is meant for the day after, and it keeps on going. The research that I've done in the lab has helped. It will next will help someone else, and that will help someone else, and then in the end we'll find whatever it is that we wanted to find. So for my last point, this is where you shine. So the points before, we're all talking about your research, the potential research that you want to do, the field that you want to go into, just talking about nothing to do with you as a person. But now, you need to talk about you. Why should you be the person that they pick? Why should you be the one that continues the research? Why should you be the person that they, they give the money to? And why should you be the person that they decide takes on the responsibility of publishing the next paper or being the person that finds the next amazing thing? Why? Why should, why should they pick you? Why? Because you're patient, you're resilient, you're a team player, you're collaborative. It's so, so, so fundamentally, it's just, it's so important and it's fundamental to research, in research to be a collaborative person, to work in a team. Uh, someone who doesn't work well in a team wouldn't do well in research, I think. Um, sell yourself at the end of the day, just sell yourself. What unique capabilities you have, what do you have to bring to the table? Um, it doesn't have to be related to that to that topic. So, it, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be scientific. But if you can relate to it somehow, that would be great. You know, if you love long country walks, or if you love to horse ride, or if you love to play football, or whatever it is, mention that and say, you know, I'm a team player, I always go, I, always, I play football and so I, you know, work as a team. Let me quickly just do a summary. Number one, explain the background of your topic. Number two, explain what is missing 
in your field and why research is needed. Um, number three, describe the aims and the hypothesis of the things that you want to look at and the aspect um, that you want to look at of the research. Number four, explain the method and clearly justify why you want to choose that method and what it is that you will do and you can mention here what experience you have in that method if you do. Number five, make sure you reference other people's work. Make sure you look at other people's work in on different websites such as PubMed or Google Scholar or just Google um, and talk about so use that use those papers as evidence to, as to why it is that you want to study and you want to research what it is that you do. Um, number six, you then need to explain what the potential is of your research. So where is your research going to go? What what benefit is your research going to give to society? What benefit is your research going to give to the science community or the English community or the maths community or whatever it is that you are in? What benefit and what are you going to add to that? Number seven and the last one is why are you the one that should be chosen? What unique capabilities do you have and what experience do you have to justify those capabilities? Let me know if you want any support or any help. Do send me an email at imaninplace at gmail.com. I do have a service where I can look at your personal statements and give you a complete proofread, a complete um, kind of redraft uh, advice. I'm not going to write it for you, but I can definitely take a look and let you know how you can improve that. Uh, so do send me an email if you're interested in that um, and I, I can turn it around within the next day. I get really, really mild again and then another beast appeared and then it snowed again on the weekend. God knows what's going on now, it's a bit, it's a bit warm now, I'm not 100% sure what's going on, it's the middle of March. <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope, that, I hope that you are having a great time and I will see you on my next video. Bye!